What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with more Idle Heroes, and today we are going to start, uh, not necessarily a new series, but a new branch of our Support Hero series, and we're going to start going through some of the most popular early game damage dealer heroes. So, what we are going to do, and what the plan is, is if you have not seen it already, it's on our main page when you get to our YouTube, the what hero to build to E5 first. We go over three to four main heroes that you should pick from plus some subcategory heroes so what we're gonna do is go through those heroes first so that everybody knows how to build those heroes exactly we have gone over it briefly in other videos and Sealand videos but I want to make a video for each hero and we are starting off with Horus. Horus is a warrior in the shadow faction and he, he's a, he's a tank and he's a damage dealer, all rolled into one. He is an absolutely beast of a, of a hero for your first E5. He can get you to seal land 18 solo, just by himself, doesn't require any other enabled heroes, high level heroes, nothing. Seal land 18, but the, the downside is you cannot progress past 18 without a pretty significant E5 shadow lineup. Let's go over Horus so you understand his abilities a little bit more, especially since he did get a buff late last year and his abilities have changed. His active is Torment of Flesh and Soul. What this active skill does is it deals damage against three random enemies and leaves a bleed on them for three rounds. Uh, so if the enemy that he hits is in the front line, it deals extra damage, so it's 15% of the enemy's max damage or max health, but it caps out based on Horus's attack. So it caps out at 1500% of a Horus's attack value, and if the enemy is in the back line, it guarantees an extra 108% critical strike damage. So that is really, really good. Um, yeah, overall, it's just a pretty solid ability. Uh, if you're building PvE, this is mainly why you want to build a horse for strictly PvP, PvE, no seal land, for straight up attack damage. His first passive Corrupted Rebirth is just that, just all the passive buffs. HP, attack, armor break, block, all really great, the block being the most important one. His second passive is Descending Raven. Whenever a hero on the battlefield releases an active skill, Horus gains 5% attack and 2% crit damage. So that continues to add up. That's why the longer the horse is going, the better his overall stats are. And his last active, what I think is one of his most important, is whenever he uh, he successfully blocks three block or three attacks. So the third time he blocks an attack, he will dispel all CC effects, all control effects. So it's like a purify on a block essentially so after the third block he will dispel all cc and he deals 20 percent of max hp damage against three random enemies once again capping out on his attack but it actually caps out at a higher value than his active that is why his passive is so important to make sure you block every attack that hits horus and then it also restores his hp by 40 percent of the damage dealt so Overall, this is one of the most important skills with Horus and the main reason for Seal Land and PvP that you want a high block chance. Uh, you definitely want block as well in PvE, but there's a couple different options based on what you want to build. As far as gear goes, Horus, you just want to throw on that full warrior setup. If you are going for maximum damage in PvE, what you want to wear is the uh, the weapon right here with three piece. But overall, I like I like having him having the full set. He gets a little control immune, damage reduced, things like that. Honestly, it, when it comes to the soul stone, you should be rolling a block HP. Granted, in the past, people have run an attack stone. That's okay, but you really want to try to get as much block as possible. Uh, for sea land you have to hit that magic block number uh, So on our horse right here. We are at where's block 113% you want to try to be over at least a hundred um, 
yeah, it's it's just the best stone I think for him for an overall horse. If you're gonna want him to be decent in PvP, you want him to be amazing in Sea Land. You need to have the block HP stone. As far as the artifact goes, um, there's a couple different options. Of course, the best item you can ever get for horse. Let's come on over here and look at the artifact since we do not have one. The best item for him is withered armor right here so withered armor is just the basic damage reduce hp artifact but it gives that extra 18 percent hp to the shadow faction if for some reason you do not have the artifact withered uh withered armor it's not 100 percent necessary you can get away with using like a uh, like a fearless armor because you're just losing that 18 percent hp or if you want to really risk it and you have the pay to win artifact something like this is all right the other option that you can use whoops that you can use for your horse is the augustus magic ball that is another one that is really good you have high block um it gives you attack speed's not as important but the block and the attack are really good damage reduce missing on it is it's kind of why i don't like it because there's no damage reduce i mean ultimately withered armor is the best item for him fearless armor is a perfectly fine substitute for seal land it has been done seal land 18 without withered armor so just keep that in mind because buying withered armor for 100 relics is very very pricey as far as enables go of course in pvp you want to use the good old 11312 when you go to pve you want to run full offensive enables with balance strike and when you are doing sea land you want to run one one three one one the balance strike in sea land is absolutely important it is what i would say necessary for the extra damage and the occasional healing you have two different skins when it comes to the horse the first being the blood war god it gives hp attack and crit damage absolutely amazing if you are building a purely pve horus if you need Horus for Sea Land and PvP, the Steam Fantasy skin is definitely the better option in my opinion. 5% damage reduce, 6% attack, and 6% block. The block and the damage reduce are huge for Sea Land. We have been trying to push Sea Land uh, 18 with our Horus here for quite a while. We've just been stuck on it. Um, speaking about Sea Land requirements, when it comes to guild tech, you need to have the maximum warrior set up going and you need pretty much maximum anti-mage and anti-priest. So these two nodes right here really need to be maxed out because the uh, the mage in the back and the two priests really do a lot of damage in Sea Land. Um, honestly, priest is a kind of waste in the long run just because in PvP, at least right now, there's no priest that can do absolutely bonkers damage. You want to counter... Yeah, so it's not a big deal, but anti-mage, anti-priest, absolutely necessary. So don't forget about that. You definitely need it. But overall, Horse is one of those absolutely amazing heroes to have as your first E5 because when it comes to Sea Land, he does amazing when soloing. So just so everybody knows what you want to do for your Sea Land setup. A, you need a Phoenix pet. The Phoenix pet needs to be maxed out when it comes to the runes of attack and health. Speed, not very important. Um, even the level of the Phoenix isn't huge. The higher the level, the more crit damage bonus you get, though. Or not crit damage bonus, just damage bonus on burning targets. So when you come to Sea Land, there's very key heroes you need. You need to have a Death Sworn that will die and leave a burn on all enemies for the entire fight. In slot two, you put Horus. Then slots three through five, you are going to use three star ice trolls leveled up with split gear and a damage reduce artifact because these three warriors need to be able to live through one hit in round one so that they can get their actives off, which have a chance to freeze the frontline warriors. And the last slot is kind of a filler. Um, I personally have used Karma most of the times just to lower the precision of the enemy team, which means Horus has a higher chance to block. It works perfectly. So the one thing I want to do jump in here so that everybody can see what 
what happens uh we're actually gonna do one attempt in sea land the only thing i'm gonna change right now is just going to that passive right there you don't know we're gonna do one other thing we're gonna throw on that fearless armor and we're gonna jump in here so what needs to happen and uh kind of what i want to show you guys is how the fight progresses with horses skills i want to highlight so you know what the horses skills actually do we're gonna take it really really slow here is is a little painfully slow i know but it makes it so much easier to see the attacks happen and in sea land see right here this is where it's important our trolls barely live so that is good that was his active attack right there hitting a few different targets and here you go third block he does his counter attack and heals so that is super important one block two block three blocks he counters attacks and gets another big heal so that's where it becomes very good of course as the fight goes on as the enemies use actives he will continue to gain attack and crit damage so he just keeps stacking up that offensive ability um but yeah the big thing is the counter attack his last passive is where all of his damage and all of his healing comes from right there you just see his bar top right back off every single time Ooh, we almost died i wonder if we can do it this time we're actually doing pretty decent in the guide guys but this is how the fight goes you need to just keep healing and lining up damage you need to constantly hit the mage in the back here so that the mage is one of the first targets to die but yeah pretty much it just comes down to rng and seal land but i hope this kind of helped you guys understand why horus's last passive is so important i don't think we're gonna have the damage to win this honestly usually if you don't have the uh <laughs> the mage down pretty early on it gets very difficult because once you get down to two targets um you're not counter attacking as much and this this main target here just has way too much health to beat your way through so we'll see we might get lucky here right at the end but you know we're just not counter attacking quite enough it could be very close it, how how amazing would that be guys if we did it right here no nope, just barely not enough damage so close but yeah i hope that kind of illustrates how the fight goes why horse is such a good solo sea land hero he can be absolutely amazing in pve he's decent in early game pvp he actually gets better towards the late game in pvp and then of course end game pvp he starts falling off a little bit but he's still a solid hero um definitely definitely would say horse and penny are the two contenders for the first e5 hero you should build but i am more of a fan of horse just because it requires much less rng and overall he's a much better hero as far as stability and guaranteed damage whereas penny is a lot of crit damage so if you guys have not checked it out make sure you check out the who to make my first e5 hero i'm gonna throw a link to it in the description so if you haven't checked it out or just need a refresher go check that video out and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope it was informative. I hope it's helpful. Let me know who you want me to do, who you, <laughs> who you want the next hero to be. Do you want me to do Penny? Do you want me to do Garuda? Do you want me to do Kathuga? Let me know. Leave it in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're so close to 6,500 subscribers. Probably when this comes out, we're at 6,500. So thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one.